welcome back. We're in Exodus 15 today, verses 14 to 16. We're working our way through just kind of the, just taking bits as the song of Moses as we go. And so uh, we keep on here. The peoples have heard they tremble. Anguish has gripped the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed. The leaders of Moab trembling grips them. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them. By the greatness of your arm, they are motionless as stone until your people pass over, O Lord, until the people pass over whom you have purchased. So there's fear among the enemies of God's people. Uh, what is this? It's fear. What's it based on? It's fear, not because they were afraid of the Hebrews. It's fear based on the works of God, based on the mighty things that God has done. Uh, he's feared. He's feared by his enemies. Uh, when Egypt thought to just continue oppressing God's people, we got the 10 plagues, one, two, three, four, five, and all, away they went. Uh, by the time it was over, yeah, the Egyptians had learned something about this God. One thing, they may not have embraced his, his merciful character and his goodness, but they learned to fear him. I guess that's something. So along the way, the enemies of God's people, they look out and they do learn that God is mighty and powerful and certainly can beat any of their fake gods up. Is it a bad thing that the enemies of God's people are concerned about the power of God because of the mighty works of God? I don't think it's a bad thing to know that God is behind you and on your side and your enemies know that he's on your side. That's, that's, that's good. Now, the last portion we read today in verse 16 until your people pass over, O Lord, until the people pass over whom you have purchased. See, these people were going from one position to another, like we said, kind of position A to position B. He's taking them from one location to another, and, and he's going to put them into that location where he wants them to be. He is going to guard and guide and protect and facilitate and help it and make it happen on the way. So you and I, as we've mentioned day by day here, we're on the way. We're not where we're going. We haven't arrived yet, but we're on the way. And if we are going with God, he will protect us. He will be with us until we pass over. He's going to keep growing us. And we need to keep being in the word. We need to keep taking in the word. We need to keep allowing his, his word to shape our mind, shape our character, and cause us to become more and more as he is, full of loving kindness and mercy and uh, actually fairly determined to do good, not just going to roll over and just say, oh, here come the bad guys, there, here come the bad bullies, I guess I'm stepping out of the way while they go by. That's not the way God does it. When a bully comes up against God, he, he, he crushes his head. When a bully comes up against God, he winds up getting his head crushed. God isn't for the bullies. God wants happy things. God wants his people to experience true joy, true fulfillment. And the way to that is not hedonism. It's not a full-blown entertainment lifestyle, which is all we have today is, oh, I'm awake now. I guess I'll just watch videos all, all day or I'll play video games all day or I'll, I'll watch movies all day. Or maybe I'll just get into extreme sports all day. God has higher things for us than, than uh, just these redundant everyday activities. It's like you could just living your life watching cartoons or scrolling always on your devices, your phones and tablets and computers. That's not God's plan. There are tools we can use as we grow. God's calling us to something higher, and he's going to make sure we pass over and get to where we're going. But we have to part. We have to, we have to walk as the Hebrews did all the way to Israel. All right, we'll get two more verses on this tomorrow morning. God bless you.